Good morning. <laughs> Welcome to Divine Intervention. So today's topic will be about the Holy Spirit, about following the Holy Spirit and the relationship with Him and also about some wrongdoing feelings mm. and how, how we release them. And yeah, we would love to start with a prayer. I'm so happy to see you all. Ken will read for us the prayer. So this is from um, chapter 20, Entering the Ark. So if you feel comfortable, you can close your eyes and just relax. You may wonder how you can be at peace while you are in time, there is so much that must be done before the way to peace is open. Perhaps this seems impossible to you, but ask yourself if it is possible that God would have a plan for your salvation that does not work. Once you accept his plan as the one function that you would fulfill, there will be nothing else the Holy Spirit will not arrange for you without your effort. He will go before you, making straight your path and leaving in your way no stone to trip on and no obstacle to bar your way. Nothing you need will be denied you. Not one seeming difficulty but will melt away before you reach it. You need take thought for nothing, careless of everything except the purpose that you would fulfill. So beautiful. Uh, yeah, this this week was an interesting week because apparently there were many, many things to do. <laughs> <laughs> like very, very busy days, different things. I was feeling actually quite stressed out and very like overwhelmed. Like how can I manage to do all these different things at once and yeah, I was just really asking for help, like I I hate to feel this way, I hate to feel just so stressed out and so anxious and feeling that I can't accomplish everything that I wanted to do or and I guess most of us have felt that way at some point <laughs> and yeah, it was it was really important for me to be able to share these feelings that I was having. Like this, all the thoughts that were coming up for me. And at that point, I was joining with a friend, Jenny. She was in the last show. And she told me something that just like struck me like, oh yeah, <laughs> I just for, really forgot about this. And she said, well, Anna, every single thing that comes your way or every single thing that you have to do is just an opportunity to be connected to the Spirit and to feel that guidance and that connection. And I was like, oh my God, I thought it was about doing something, <laughs> completing something. And then it was like, Oh, so I'm having all these opportunities just to be with the Spirit. I am having apparently all these tasks just for that. That became a lot more exciting. <laughs> it wasn't about the tasks anymore. So I was practicing all week with that, like, okay, just pause, okay. Holy Spirit, I heard Kirsten say, he's an expert 
in marketing, he's the <laughs> expert in decoration, he's an expert in anything, anything that you need help with. And that I only needed to ask help. So, yeah, it's been... Mm. The feelings of stress have gone way down, way down. Because I just, okay, I just really want to feel connected. You are the expert, <laughs> show me. Definitely my way isn't really working out because I'm stressed out. <laughs> I'm not getting, yeah, I'm not getting to where I want to be or something. And yeah, it's like when you're trying to be the expert. <laughs> I, I, I thought I was the expert. <laughs> that's, the, that's, the, that's the problem that I have to make these decisions and I've got to make the right decision and mm -hmm. I can't make the wrong decision. But if I'm making that decision on my own, then that's the opportunity that comes up that I could make the wrong decision, but I also could make the right decision. Mm. So it's like there's that continuous living in fear because it's like, okay, if I, make, if I make the wrong decision, then I'm, then I'm wrong. And then you're praying, hoping that you're going to make the right decision. And then there's some relief. Okay, I made the right decision. Mm. Oh. But yet, yeah, if you haven't asked, then it's always seemingly down on your experience. <laughs> uh, so. It hasn't really worked out, right? <laughs> no. You haven't been really happy with that idea. No, it doesn't work out so well. It doesn't so well. work. So that's why it's been so beautiful. Okay, okay. I was, I was writing a, uh, a little piece of text to this week and I was like, okay, it wasn't coming in. I was like, okay, I, apparently there was a due date that we had to send out this email. I think you got it this morning, so if you haven't seen it, I recommend it to see it. It's really beautiful. But I was like, okay, Jesus, I need help here. <laughs> Can you please, if you are the expert in writing, if you are the expert and you really, really know about this, could you please help me? And I just said, please help me. And I just closed my eyes for a second. Then like this peace came, like the, the peace came first before completing the task or thinking that I have done the right mm. decision. So the peace came like it wasn't on me anymore. And with that, I was like relaxed and then I could, I could like feel like these words coming into my mind. And I was like, oh my God, I was just typing. And I was feeling like the swirl of the Holy Spirit, like, Mm. in my forehead and in my heart and just feeling this warm feeling and I was just like typing with my eyes closed feeling all the words that were coming just typing 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 it was just such a beautiful experience mm. yeah, you actually um, that was good what you said it's like we think that the peace is going to come after we've completed the task. Mm. It's always in the future, the peace yeah. is just out of reach. But yet when you step back, when you can do it from peace, mm. be peaceful in the beginning, and then find out what it is that needs to come through, yeah. rather than, if I get this done, I'm gonna be peaceful. Yeah, yeah, that's always a trick. Yeah, peace is always in the future, Yeah, and it's not now. Yeah. Particularly if it's something that's difficult, that you are, you, you're not too sure on what to do, mm -hmm. then you feel, oh, well, I feel like I've got to move in the direction of doing rather than being in, the, being in a prayerful in state. Presence. Yeah, and just step back, okay. That's the most important time to be relaxed, first of all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. and the answer comes just so gently and in, the, in all of the of the book mm. so many times it says I will answer you like <laughs> if you ask me for help mm -hmm. I will answer you yeah. like there is no question about it yeah and like all our feelings of control mm. or guilt or something is just the things that need to be washed away we are just gently being convinced like there's no need to punish ourselves mm or judge how well we're doing or not. Yeah. It's just a very gentle way. 
yeah, this, this, this morning, we actually weren't really fully clear as to what the, what the complete lesson was. And um, I was looking for something else in the course and I undone the book and of course it brought me to the right place. <laughs> and it was just like so interesting, everything that we had been talking about. And it was talking about our overlearning in the world, that we've overlearned too much and that you think that you know the lessons of the world, but in actual fact, you actually don't know. And it's to undo the lessons. So do you feel this would be a good time to read? Yeah, yeah, yeah that sounds great. You'll really enjoy this. It's really beautiful. So when I undone the book this morning, it took me to the final vision, which is chapter 31. And it was the first section, the simplicity of salvation. Learning is an ability you made and gave yourself. Now does your ancient overlearning stand implacable before the voice of truth and teach you that its lessons are not true. Too hard to learn, too difficult to see and too opposed to what is really true. Yet you will learn them for their learning is the only purpose for your learning skill the Holy Spirit sees in all the world. His simple lesson in forgiveness have a power mightier than yours because they call from God and from yourself to you. So yeah, it's often, I, I, I love this. This was the first bit that I read this morning. I thought, oh, thank you, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> it just says it so clearly, like all the overlearning you have yeah. is standing in front of the voice of truth. And then we start thinking, this is very hard. Yeah, this book difficult. is not something I can apply to my everyday or I need to be in community or something to be yeah. able to practice yeah. and this lesson for me this week was so practical like yeah. anything anything that we're doing is just an opportunity to tune in yeah feel connected with the spirit and and the actual title of this the, this section is, is is the giveaway the simplicity <laughs> of salvation <laughs> Oh, and yet, so beautiful. when he explains it, it's like we think, oh, it's really difficult. This is really hard. Mm. I'm not going to get it. Mm. And equally feeling like I have to continuously learn more and more and more. But in actual fact, that's actually going in the wrong way. Mm -hmm. um, that's putting the, he, he, I think. That's it, the trick. He explains, in the, he, he explains in this next bit. Yeah. Do, do you want to read the next bit? Yeah. So the certain outcome of the lesson that God's Son is guilty is the world you see. It is a world of terror and despair, nor is there hope of happiness in it. There is no plan for safety you can make that ever will succeed. There is no joy that you can seek for here and hope to find it. Yet. This is not the only outcome which your learning can produce. However much you may have overlearned your chosen task, the lesson that reflects the love of God is stronger still. And you will learn God's Son is innocent and see another world. Mm. That ties in with your feeling that you were doing things wrong. Mm. <laughs> that comes up a lot, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Mm. This is so beautiful. We're just allowing our perceptions to be cleaned. Mm. Yeah, it's like if we if we invest in the world and the outcomes of the world, it's always this good and bad, right and wrong. There's the duality that you're governed by mm. in your own mind. And so when you're trying desperately to get that right, there's on the flip side of that, I can, I can get it wrong. Mm. But withdrawing into God's plan, which is the joyous plan, which is the change of perception, the change of mind, not, not in the form, 
not looking to that for my happiness, but for my complete mind, then when my mind changes, the world actually changes. Mm. But it's like, again, it's like the opposite, like what we just talked about. If only I can get this done in the form, then I'm going to be happy. And it's mm. like, no, I must be happy here for things to change in my mind to see, <laughs> to see the happiness and the mm. love that we are. But in that difficulty, in, in that wrong-mindedness, of course, now I'm projecting out the wrongness and then I'm, then I'm seeing it mm. and then I'm believing that it's actually me and that, that, that it's actually <laughs> true. What if you're innocent? Yeah. That's just the question. Hmm. Well, he repeats it many, many times. It's like, hmm, yeah. have you ever thought, hmm, maybe I'm innocent? Well, it's not something that we really learn, is it, that you're innocent? No. Well, we were, I was talking about this um, the other day, and it's like, you know, in court, you're innocent until you're proven guilty. <laughs> 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 mm. it's, like, it's like this world is sad. You're yeah. really guilty. We don't come on. We're going to prove that you're guilty. Of course, you're mm. not innocent. And so the course is that complete reversal of like being innocent. And I think that's what he actually says in this la last part, I think. Yeah, it does say that. The outcome of the lesson that God's Son is guiltless is a world in which there is no fear. And everything is lit with hope and sparkles with a gentle friendliness. Mm. Nothing but calls to you in soft appeal to, your f to be your friend and let it join with you. Mm. Mm, that is oh. so sweet. Oh, that's the gift. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Everything's here to help. Mm. In the world where there is no fear. Mm. And everything is lit with hope and sparkles with mm. a gentle friendliness. Holy Spirit will convince us yeah. and will help us get, feel that, experience yeah. that. It's not far away. Yeah. It's not it's far now. away. <laughs> mm. It's this moment with our friends together yeah. <laughs> to remember that. Mm. <laughs> mm. That's what we have to remember. The Son of God is guiltless. Mm. Nothing but calls to you in soft appeal to be your friend and let it join with you. Mm. You know, oh. this reminds me of something else. Like this week, there has been like these pra different practices that I've been doing because I just really want to strengthen my relationship with the Holy Spirit, like the first one I already told you that I was just really pausing, praying, help me, and being, being moved to whatever I, I needed to do. But then this other one has been, that I always find meditation a little difficult. <laughs> I just find it difficult. And then I was like, okay, what can I do? And it just came really clear. Oh. It is a conversation with the Spirit. I like that. I would like to have that. Yes, it's the same as my journaling that I've been doing too. Like sometimes when it's hard for me to sink in meditation or stay there, I just get my journaling notebook and I start writing down like my friend, like, good morning, I love you. Here are all my thoughts. This is all my ideas about this, and I woke up with this, and this, and this, and it's just like this beautiful, yeah, emptying my mind so that I can receive whatever I need to receive that morning. And it's been so helpful, like I feel more connected, closer, that it's not something ab abstract in my mind or something that I can't reach or can't have a connection with. Like it just feels so sweet, so close, so, so close. Yeah. <laughs> and you get answers back? Yes. <laughs> yes. Sometimes 
it is a little different than what I, what I would have thought. <laughs> but I'm trying not to judge anything that comes. And that has been so beautiful, so great. We are like judging machines or something. And I'm just like feeling more relaxed, like, okay, this is perfect. Sometimes I don't ask for anything, but I just ask for help and the gifts come mm. in a beautiful way, just very gentle. Mm. So I'm so grateful. Like these just little, little practices are making a big, big difference to my experience. And it's so close, like so reachable. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just very excited, very, very excited and very mm. happy. Mm. Did you feel like reading a little bit from Yeah. The Peace of God is More One God? Yeah, we have this book in our, in our library here. And you can buy it? Yeah, in our store. It's called The Peace of God is My One Goal. And it's just a really, really sweet book. And I just found this, this reading from Guidance that I think you would like. I loved it. And I read it to Ken yesterday and he loved <coughs> it. So, <laughs> yeah. So Guidance. Just the fact that you are working with this material is proof that like it or not. Robert always says, like it or like it. You are being guided whether you are aware of it or not. And there are many questions we have with guidance, like, am I doing this right? How do I know if I'm, I'm guided? What if I choose the wrong thing or something? And she just says, rather, rather than discussing questions specifically, I feel moved to share my personal process in gaining trust in the Holy Spirit's guidance. As I began working with my ACIM, which includes doing a lesson a day from the workbook, my life seemed to get crisper and less unconscious, less vague. I would notice a fresh thought waiting to be noticed waiting for me to listen. It was obviously not a rehearsed thought, but something said in a new way, perhaps a new perspective. With a sense of excitement, I began acting on those thoughts to discover their validity. How else can you ever know for sure? Trying to figure out what to do always seems to muddy everything up. Noticing my thoughts about what to do in a situation, I try not to fight them. Instead, I encourage them to come to my awareness. Sometimes I even list all of the ideas I have about something. When I am empty, I say, Okay, Holy Spirit, I'm just finished. I now ask you to guide me. Thank you. And then I just relax. Trusting I will be guided. Everyone has had the experience of asking and not seeming to receive. Yet in the Bible, Jesus is quoted as saying, Ask and you shall receive. In a meditation, I realized Jesus certainly was talking about guidance. Ask for guidance and you will receive it. I decided to experiment with ask and you will receive as pertaining to guidance. As often as I could possibly think to ask for guidance during the day, I did. Whenever I would think of Holy Spirit, I would just thank Him for guiding my life and ask Him to please continue. Then I would simply assume that I was guided, whether I heard a voice specifically or not. The results in my life proved to me that all I had to do was ask for guidance to receive it. I allowed myself to pause and be still often and would notice what I felt moved to do. 
I began to notice that although my ego wanted dramatic displays of guidance, loud inner voice, signs and wonders, what I perceived most often, often are gentle urges, quiet thoughts, a suggestion from another person which resonates within me, etc. I experience guidance as a natural, undramatic fact of life. Once I've asked for guidance from the Holy Spirit, ego has no power. When light is called upon, darkness is powerless. Following the Holy Spirit's guidance is for me the most exciting experience this planet offers. It combines all the elements of mountain climbing, hand gliding, skiing, car racing, surfing, <laughs> dealing with constantly changing conditions, moving quickly into the unknown, feelings of leaping off into an avenue. A this, a this. Struggle to overcome resistance. In intense thrill and joy in process and results. It's a 24 hour a day adventure. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's what we want. That sounds a lot more exciting than, the, than just doing the things we think we know through the day. Mm. Doesn't mm. it? Yeah, I love that. <laughs> yeah, An makes, adventure. Yeah, completely. Mm. Mm. <laughs> mm. I'm so grateful. Mm. It just feels like such a sweet, mm. sweet lessons always. Yeah, I love the fact that, like in there, we often think there's going to be a thunderbolt of <laughs> aha experience and there's going to be all these amazing words coming through and you're waiting for that experience, but it's like mm. very, very gentle. Very gentle. It could come through a brother or, yeah, just mm, no. a slight movement in another direction. Yeah, I just love even like she, once she had committed her day to the Holy Spirit, it was like, I trust you are guiding me. Mm. And she would always say like, okay, if I need correction in anything of my life, could you please show me? Mm. That just feels so much gentler. Yeah, and just her other part where she said, um, when it was a fresh thought, mm. and she decided, okay, I'm gonna follow those. That's something new in my perception. It's just experimenting. Yeah. It's just having fun. It doesn't have to be serious. This is a happy adventure. Mm. Back home. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't feel that way all the time, but I'm sure under all the darkness has to come out so that we can keep 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 mm. that beautiful yeah. journey back home. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you so, so much. Thank you very much for joining mm, us. Thank you so much. It's it always so good to be with you all. It's lovely to see your faces. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Love you. <laughs> <laughs>